Hi, this is Charlie Calvert. Um, let's take a moment to make sure we understand how to use the Angular HTTP service and how to write a test to confirm that it's working with using mock objects. So here you can see I've created a controller, a standard Angular controller called my controller. It matches up to the controller that we've defined here. And if you come back here, you'll see that um, it's got a little hint uh, property in it, which is just there mostly to uh, for a sanity check, just to make sure everything's hooked up. And then it's got a method called loadjson, which actually uses the HTTP service to load a file called data.json. And data.json is a very simple JSON file. We just need something to prove that we can do it. It's got a name, a hit points, and a damage field. So we'll come over here and we actually load the JSON and then we have set up a success and an error method. So if the something goes wrong, we'll print out an error, we'll throw an exception. And if all goes well, we'll set a property um, here, a little ng model called data up. Now, just to be clear, you can use dot syntax just as easily for setting up your success and error methods. There's no difference between these two codes conceptually, um, except for the fact that you're creating a variable here. But since we're inside the scope of a variable, we're not inside the scope of a function, we're not pushing anything into the global namespace. So whether we do it or not is, is a little bit academic. It, it's really up to you. I think when I'm writing a demo, this code is a little easier to read. So I'll stick with this. Okay. So let's go ahead and run index dot um, JSON and we'll run it in the Chrome browser and it loads and then you can see down here here's where we're after we push the button the data is going to get loaded and we load it in and we can see we display all of the data from the file and we display each individual field coming back in here again remember here's what our JSON looks like here's the entire um, chunk of JSON which as you can see shows up here with no carriage return line feeds, but it's clear, clear what it is. And then we pull out each individual field, NPC01, hit points one, damage two, hit points one, damage two, and NPC01. To go back and looking at our HTML for a second here, <clears throat> we have a button here. When we click it, load JSON gets called, right? The load JSON method gets called when we click the button. And then over here, we pull out the individual fields. Remember, we set everything to data. So over here, we've got data is set to the data that was retrieved. Um, here is the first parameter that gets sent back in the success method. There's other parameters if you want to play with them. And um, then we display all the data, and then we display individually the name, the hit points, and the damage. And then once again, just to confirm, you can see they're all there. Um, nothing would change if we used the dot syntax instead of the other. Let's not play with that. Let's go ahead and instead look at our test method for it. And our test method um, starts out pretty much the same we test any controller. We declare a controller variable. We have a for each. We inject the root scope, the controller. We get a, a default controller, and then we attach our actual controller to that default controller and we get ahead we get that we get a handle of our controller and then we can do things and like write a simple test to check whether the hint is equal to what we set the hint to over here so you can see the beginning of it at least and you can see that in our test it um, begins in the same way and you know you don't need to see the whole thing but if since we have that, we can now run our tests, which link in Angular, link in Mox, which we're going to use in a second, links in Jazz, uh, Jasmine start file. Um, sorry, I don't really even want to show you that, but why don't we do it? Um, that's just the default Jasmine code. Okay, that's your default Jasmine for starting Jasmine. Okay, and um, then the test 
loads in Angular, loads in Mox, Jasmine Start, loads in our index, and loads in our test. And when we go ahead and we run this, we can see that all of our tests succeed. We've, we figured out about this hint one, what we, how do we test loading JSON? And that's a little bit tricky here, so let's talk about it for a second. We're going to come into here and notice that I'm also loading in something called an HTT backend, okay? And this is a mock HTTP service. So it's considered incorrect in when you're writing unit tests to have a dependency on something like HTTP. So what we do is we mock up the HTTP service using something built in to Jasmine, built into Angular, this concept of being able to use a, a fake backend, a mock backend, because people need to do this so often. And the way you use it, first we, before each, we inject our backend. We could combine these two codes into one before each, but I think it's clearer to do it in two steps. Then we have our backend and we, say that we are going to do a get method and we are expecting the get method to load data.json. And remember, that's what we do over here. We load data.json. And it would be an error to, to try to load some other file. It knows what file the thing's really loading. So if we come back in here and run our tests, you can see it blows up because it was expecting you to get data.json and we actually tried to get something else. So we're mocking things up, but we aren't mocking them up so completely that there's no relationship to our real code. So we fix that, we come back in here, we do an F5 and all our tests pass again. And then, then here's the mock. We mock up the JSON that we're expected to get back. We're expected to respond with this JSON. And so we mock that up. So the HTTP call is never really made Instead, we just pass in what it would return. And then we call our load JSON method. And then you must call this flush method here, which will actually go get your um, flush your code, flush the make, make the call happen. And then we test and say, is it equal to what we expect it to be equal to? Are these two matching up? So let's suppose we made a mistake and we we change things a little bit here. Then when you had the error expected in PC2 and it was to equal in PC1 and they don't, they don't equal each other, so it's broken. So we'll go back, we'll fix our code and then we'll run our test again and it works. We do the same thing when we're testing the hit points. We check that 37 is really equal 37 and the same thing with the damage that five really equals five. So that shows you the way you do this. I'm missing one little piece, so I'm going to go out and find that for you. Hold on. Okay, we were missing one piece in here. I frankly just didn't notice it till I was doing the, uh, <clears throat> running the, uh, discussing it with you here. Um, we need to call after each, after each test, we need to check to make sure that all of our calls to flush, everything's being flushed properly. So let's suppose we forgot to call flush here. And then if we come back over here for our test and we run it, you can see that um, we get an unflushed request here. So something didn't get flushed. Let's go back. We return it. We come back over here and we run it and everything passes again. So you should add this code in right here to make sure that you're matching up all your calls to flush. I believe that it would also raise an error if you had an extra call to flush, which didn't make any sense. Yeah, it does that no pending request to flush. So it tells you you made a flush you didn't need to make. So you want to add in that little chunk of code too. All right. And that's really all I wanted to show you here. Um, you learned a little bit about how to do an HTTP, use the HTTP get service in one of two different syntaxes. And you also learned a little bit about um, writing tests and particularly how to use the HTT backend. Um, remember that this example, like all our examples, are um, up here on 
in the JS Objects area on GitHub, Charlie Calvert's JS Objects area. This one's called JSON for Server, and it's in the JavaScript Design JSON folder, um, which uh, would be if you install JSON, JS Objects, JavaScript Design JSON from Server. So you can go ahead and download the example and play with it some and have all the code that's available there. All right, thank you so much. Bye now. Charlie Calvert, Elvenware video.